Afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this session hosted by Fujitsu. Uh, we're delighted this year to be a Premium Plus partner here at Ignite. Um, I hope you've all been having a great time. We've really enjoyed everything we're doing and um, really pleased to have you with us. Um, this session today is about building a digital supply chain with Fujitsu and Microsoft Solutions. Uh, we will explain some of the challenges in today's supply chains and demonstrate our solutions that leverage Microsoft technology such as generative AI. Um, I've got a team here to present to you today. Um, so first of all, you'll, you'll hear from um, Takeshi, who is our head of sustainable transformation. Um, he will talk about digitalization and sustainability in the supply chain. Um, also joined by Yuki, um, who is head of technology adoption, and will talk about our use of AI technology in our solutions. Uh, Mika will run our great demonstrations for you, and I'm Andrew, and I'll be your moderator for the session. So straight away, let me hand you over to Takeshi. So thank you for, thank you for the introduction, Andrew, and good afternoon. Is the mic on? No? Can you hear me now? Yes. Right. Right. So thank you for the introduction, Andrew. A very good afternoon, everybody. My name is Takeshi Yamazaki. I'm leading the sustainable transformation business in Fujitsu. Before I start, thank you very much for joining our breakout session today with us while you are busy. And I also would like to thank to the Microsoft to give us such a great opportunity today at Ignite. So today, I'd like to talk about data supply chain management on sustainability with Microsoft. So we did some survey. Let me share some background information. Sorry. OK, sorry. So um, we interviewed more than 1,800 business leaders in globe. Then most of the business leaders are shifting the management priorities by seeing the sustainability as new business opportunities. And 77% of business leaders have increased their focus on the uh, digitalizations. And 68% of business leaders are also setting a higher priority around sustainability. So what we strongly believe is digitalization has the potentials to enable the innovation, to create the business resiliency against uncertainties, which we have to anticipate and overcome. So this is uh, another result of the survey, what we did. So external factors are now on the agenda. So 53% of business leaders believe that external factors are having a significant impact on the businesses. So for example, the intensification of cyber attacks comes to the top, followed by high inflation, rising the interest rate, geopolitical risk, the climate change. So these external factors are also environmental and social and economic sustainability issues now. So what Fritz does towards sustainability? So in 2021, Fujitsu launched a new business model it's called Fujitsu Urbans, which is the commitment to drive the sustainability, solving the social issues across the industries. So we have advanced technologies. We have skill sets and industrial knowledge to accelerate the sustainability transformation for the client and the market. So sustainability with supply chain management. Focusing on supply chain is key to overall ESG's effort because 90% of GHG emissions and 50 to 70% of um, operation costs are attributable to the supply chain. So beyond the risk avoidance and the compliance, organizations are seeking the ways to create long-term value embedded in sustainability into supply chain operation. So how we can strengthen the supply chain? 
So here are some challenges for sustainability across supply chain. Disconnected data. The data is usually siloed and complex. Emergency resilience, yes, you need to prepare in multiple dimensional way to secure the resilience. And of course, you need to mitigate and reduce the environmental impact as much as possible and as soon as possible. So you need to play the long game, but start supply chain initiatives now. So here is the, the six categories of supply chain we defined that you need to be aware of. Disaster risk, geopolitical risk, and the mid to long term risk, which includes ESG much. So these three risks are already ongoing in general now. And you also have a supplier risk, operation risk, and then market demand risk according to the uh, value chains. So you have to consider and manage all types of risk at the same time with many plans and scenarios. So what is the key? So we believe that the key factors for this is how we gather, accumulate, and access, and manage the data, and utilize it at scale for enterprise and ecosystem level. So this is the kind of model we defined for required risk management progress processes. So you start with define and evaluate the risk, and the plan, the mitigation scenarios, and execute the plans, and revise it, update it. So this is very simple, it looks very easy, but all of you here know that this is very difficult. So in order to do that, you need to improve the visibility and traceability. So um, to you need to deploy the technological capabilities to improve to help the supplier's visibility and supplier engagement. This is very important. And the communicating often with the stakeholders through the, the broader data sharing and the collaboration tool set is very important as well. And next, what you have to do is to analyze, you know, the, you need to see the status of yourself, which is vulnerability. So vulnerability, vulnerability it can be seen through the, the data utilization processes and simulate the countermeasures to be taken. This is what we call digital rehearsal. Digital rehearsal is, for example, to expand your ROI measurement to include both intangible impacts and sustainable outcomes. And you, you also need to think the business driver's use cases beyond the cost saving, the revenue, and any margin. So once you uh, collect all the data and visualize it, you, you make the, these cycles around, around, around again, 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 BDCA cycles. So there are two technologies behind to achieve these processes. The first one is data utilization processes with trusted data and traceable data. So blockchain type of technology is inevitable to achieve this. Second one is AI. So AI gives you insight to the concurrent planning and to some recommendation. So how Fritzu and Microsoft tackles with risk? The answer is digital supply chain management. So moving beyond the sourcing and the procurement focus on capture the benefits across the end-to-end -end supply chain, you need to take a um, you need to take an end-to-end -end type of approach to achieve this type of things. So you need to think about the planning, sourcing manufacturing, logistics, and distributions. So cross-functional type of uh, collaboration with other cross-functions would be inevitable. For example, risk, finance, you know, 
any information with regard to do that. So um, straight after my presentation, you will see what kind of solution would look like by demo. So there are two contexts. The first one is how you operate the supply chain, reducing the business risk by optimizing supply and demand balance. Second one is how you reduce the supply chain risk corresponding to the natural disasters. So AI gives you the insight, not only QCD perspective, but also the environment perspective. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Back to Andrew. Thank you very much, Takashi. Um, so Takashi hopefully has set the kind of context for what we see in terms of some of the challenges and how we need to address those um, in the solutions that we bring. We've got a slide here which shows some of the areas that we are focusing on in terms of solutions around supply chain optimization, around supply chain risk reduction. Um, but now Mackie's going to come and join us and she's going to give you an actual demonstration of some of the solutions that we've been talking about and give you an idea about what they look like um, and how they can help in your environments. So Mackie, please join us. So thank you, Andrew. By the way, my name is Mika. <laughs> no, no big worries. So for today's demonstration, we prepared two scenarios and we set the persona as a manager of the supply chain management division who works at air conditioner manufacturers. And for the first scenario, supply problems occurs in a daily procurement operation and need to take countermeasure. So we use our digital supply chain management system to digital rehearsal and optimize the demand balance. For the second scenario, natural disaster. For this time, hurricane seems to occur in Dallas and not able to procure. So we, we need to take action. So we use our digital supply chain management system to recreate resilient supply chain, recreate supply chain. For today, I'll go through both scenario in once. And before going on to the demonstration, let me mention our value and feature for the demonstration. To avoid supply chain disruption, we provide consistent solution and we call it value, like monitoring the procurement plan, identify a bottleneck of supply chain, recommend option to meet requirements, gives insight for concurrent planning, and also for the second scenario, we include instantly translate into financial impact feature. So let me begin from the first scenario. All right, good morning. Supply chain manager begins to work as usual. And let's check control tower to see our supply seems to meet the demand forecast. So this is the control tower dashboard you daily use to check the status against the demand forecast. And this helps you identify the warning area. And whenever the problem occurs, the alert comes up. And now there is some warning coming up around Texas area. And, but it seems not to be occurred yet because it's indicated in yellow. But let's go and see and check the status. So. Through this alert, alert leads you where you need to go and check next, so it brings you value of efficiency. For this time, it says production status, so we click and see. And now we move on to the monitor of the supply chain procurement situation dashboard. And those are the items we manufacture around Texas area, listed up automatically. And it seems only the product MS has a critical issue. And if we don't take any action, the product MS won't meet the supply for about 2,155 amount. Now I want to know why is this happening and up to when will this need to be solved? To get those information, we click this alert. Now we moved on to the product MS's product MS is this specific sufficient circumstances. And this graph is indicated by weekly. And as you can see in red today, we have two weeks to fix this supply. Now, I want to know what is the bottleneck of this lack of supply? 
an alert is mentioning. Need to revise mode of transportation. So you can assume there are something wrong with the transportation company, or it could be to a distribution center. But anyway, we need to take action to solve this issue. So we, let's use digital rehearsal by scenario comparison feature to have a clue on next action. And now AI is running to calculate the suitable scenario for us. And now we move on to the scenario comparison feature. Now we are using regular track service, but as you can see, there is some, some red alert coming up after the distribution set this logistic problem. And we cannot deliver by the day we want, three days delay is predicted. Now I want to see what AI recommends to us. For this time, the AI recommendation is on plan B. Compared to plan A, the contribution margin will get lost a little bit worse, but due to the high temperature expect, ex, ex, expected earlier than usual for this year, let's have a priority is on delivery deadline to make sure that we can get customer in early timing. So this is the end of the scenario one. By using digital rehearsal result, a CM leader can warn manufacturers ahead of time of any disruption, making changes to manufacturing timeline and hence helping solve also the supply chain issue. Or a CM leader could warn retail counterparts as ahead of time and work with a solution with retailers as well based on what they learn from this solution and offer the retailers the option of each customer experience priority, like environmental or financial. So in this scenario, I showed how SEM leader could be faced with an imbalance of demand and supply, and that how, how we could resolve it in different ways. OK, next, second scenario. And back to Control Tower again. So now, there is some warning coming up around Texas area. But this time, the warning area is on risk visualization. But the warning is on risk visualization. So now you can assume some disaster seems to approach to the Texas area. We need to check that in hurry to prevent and take measurement before we get disaster. So we click to the risk visualization to see the impact. Now you move on to the supply chain risk visualization feature. And in this feature, you can visualize and understand the natural disaster risks. Uh, as you can see, there is alert coming up in orange tab saying, hurricane is expected to make landfall on Dallas around midnight. So in this feature, you can see the disaster simulation world map in upper screen, and you can see the impact related to your supplier and bill of materials in lower screen. But the hurricane is coming and you are in so hurry right now, so you ask the, to the generative AI for the efficiency. First, I begin with this question. A hurricane arrived in Dallas, and I want to identify the suppliers that are affected. An NAI replies with the list of the company that are, seem to be affected. And next, I say, I would like to confirm the status that are affected suppliers and their impact on procurement. And an AI replies, to confirm the status of the disaster, a confirmation notice must be sent to a property supplier. Would you like to send a confirmation notice? After the notification is sent, you can check the disaster status from the screen at here. Do you give alerts for those that have not responded within one hour? And then I say, please process sending notification and raise alerts after 30 minutes instead of one hour. And then AI replies, 
Yes, we have sent you a notification and will raise an alert after 30 minutes with the individual contact details of the non-responsive suppliers. And pretend we got the mail from the supplier. We go to the link which Jenna AI indicated to us. And in, on this screen, you can check the details of the damage responses in multiple categories, such as was there were injury or damage to the building or does the network work, things like that. And for this time, it seems there were some, it seems there were some injured people are there and damage to the building. And also the production line got affected. So those information will help you make a decision like this is our key client, so we need to go and see in person. Or the production line is recovered already, so no, need, no big worry for this supplier. So those communication with the generative AI values us by substituting our action partially and instantly leads you what information you need to get in which page to help you save your time under emergency. And here we have two communication patterns for the generative AI. And let me introduce you the second pattern. And again, I begin with this question. A hurricane arrived in Dallas, Texas, and there were reports of power outages. Please, I want you to identify the suppliers that are affected. And then again, AI replies with the list of company that are, seem to be affected. And next, I ask, so which suppliers have the great, greatest influence on our profit and loss? I would like to confirm the status of affected suppliers and their impact on procurement. And then AI replies, Lemon Corporation is the most influential and recovery may take up to a month. As a result, the supply of component Alpha 1 for product 1 produced by Lemon Corporation will be disrupted, resulting in a loss of $10 million. And next, I ask. I would like to know if there are any alternative suppliers or substitutable parts for each of these orders. We need to find suppliers who are not in affected area. And then AI replies. Component Alpha 2, supplied by Tomato Corporation, can serve as a substitute for Component Alpha 1 in Lemon Corporation. This increases procurement costs by 8%, but limits losses to $0.5 million. Other alternative supplier information, the finance impact, and ESG perspective can be found here. So, all right, we want to know the impact of this big hurricane by AI simulation results, so we click to this link to see. And if the impact was too big, was really big, we need to tell management layer as quick as possible to make them be aware. So now we move on to the screen, which indicates the result of the simulate alternative supplier. As generative AI indicated to us, that as an affected supplier, Lemon Corporation. And you can see in the middle box, the potential alternative supplier, tomato, including Tomato Corporation, which AI indicated to us. And in this potential alternative supplier list, we set this list to indicate from the less impact on, sorry. <laughs> we set this list to indicate from the less impact on delivery deadline. So the Tomato Corporation is coming at the top. And sorry, it's uh, difficult to see, but in the lower column, the schedule column, this is showing all the alternative suppliers deadline, uh, delivery deadline. And as you can see, if we don't select tomato cooperation, we, won't, we need to stop our production line more than one week. So no choice. We want to have tomato cooperation to contract as an alternative supplier. So we select tomato cooperation and simulate the tomato cooperation's finance impact. So this is the result, simulation result for the specific tomato cooperation. And as you can see, Tomato Corporation delivers five days delivery delay, cost 8% increase, 
CO2 emission increases by 31%, and the expected profit and loss amount and loss amount get, gets worse. And we want to contract with Tomato Corporation, but as you could see, the expected loss amount is exceeding the internal threshold, so we need to alert to management so the pop-up comes up automatically and saying, do you want to alert to management? So we press yes. Now your management knows the situation and the impact by this big hurricane disaster. So this is the end of the scenario two. By using digital rehearsal powered by generative AI, again, values to you by substituting your action partially, like estimating the cost by the disaster, creating comparison document, contacting to management, all the stuff you need to do in hurry. We didn't include in this demo today, but we can pursue the supply chain and the result against the countermeasure you took through those dashboards. So uh, we believe this solution always uh, helps manufacturers and also the retailers to maintain their business resilience. Thank you. That's all for demonstration. Thank you very much, Mika. <laughs> Apologies for that. <laughs> um, and, and well done, Coping. Apologies about the, um, the, the kind of network challenges there. Um, so um, hopefully Mika's given you some idea of how the the blend of the technology, the gathering of the data, the visualization, the analysis and that connected to using the technologies like the generative AI to make the process of responding to those simpler and easier, how that's helpful and useful to organizations. So next I'd like to invite um, Yuki up to the stage and Yuki will talk a little bit more about the underlying technology and Fujitsu's approach to incorporating AI into those solutions. Thank you, Andrew. Hi, um, my name is Yuki. I am a head of technology adoption division leading AI business in Fujitsu. And these are the strengths of our AI. Um, we have many strengths, but I just pointed out three. One, we sell what we are using. We are actually a big company. We do have more than 120,000 employees worldwide. And they are using our AI every day, and we sell those. And secondly, we are focusing on the workflow and AI combination. We are the one of the biggest user and also an implementer for those um, big um, native um, cloud service, such as Azure, of course, SAP, Salesforce, ServiceNow, Palantir. We use everything. And it is very valuable for us to use AI across the data, multiple for the uh, services. Third, Kozuchi. This is a cloud-based AI platform providing by R&D. We're releasing cutting edge technology before it's productized and keep updating by users' feedback. And let me explain about a little bit more about AI and workflow combination. This is the journey when the customer wanted to do something or solving their issue or transforming their operation. So when customer wanted to do something, they collect data from a data source, integrate, and store it to Azure, and extract, create a data mart, and do the BI tool for visualization or AI for optimization. And finally, they do the decision making. And as many of us know, the size of value, or size of market, I could say, is really big on the decision making phase. And oftentimes, AI itself, AI is very cool, but AI itself creates little value. But once it's combined with a workflow or workflow data, it becomes, value becomes very big. This is um, directly um, related to the decision making phase. So this is very, um, the value becomes very big. So this is why we are focusing on AI and the workflow combination. So, AI and a workflow creates a big value. As Mika has demonstrated, the one of the events offering for natural disaster recovery is one of them. And let me talk a little bit about that offering. Um, I'm thinking that natural disaster recovery offering is meant to be born in Japan. 
Japan's land area is only 0.29% of the world total. So um, Japan's very small country. But we do have 18.5% of earthquake magnitude six or higher has occurred around Japan. So unfortunately, we do have a many natural disaster. And that means we do have a many knowledge and many experience about disaster recovery. We capture all those knowledge into our solution on Azure and combine with our Gen AI. And this helps very much for the customer. And by the way, the same solution can be used in a different way. My customer in Japan is using that solution for as a logistics risks. And during COVID-19, many customers or many companies had get the huge loss or disruption due to the ocean logistics. This is the graph explaining the punctuality rate of container ship on 34 major routes around the world. The number is really amazing, it's 50%. So once in every two times, the ship will be delayed. So my customer is a big manufacturing company. They're famous in the US also. But the, their procurement team is using this solution every day because it's once in every twice. <laughs> so it's, they're using every day. So to recap, Gen AI and digital supply chain, the UVENS offering workflow system, is create a big value. We do monitoring the procurement plan or identify the bottleneck, or sometimes we can do a, a instant uh, financial impact. So this is the digital reversal <coughs> by powered by Fujitsu Gen AI and the workflow system. So I have explained about the workflow and the Gen AI, but we do of course have a Gen AI itself, Gen AI application itself. And this is the basic function we do have a chat interface, also a data ingestion or the management, and also data reference function. And of course, we are focusing on uh, workflow AI combination, so we do have many APIs. And the third one is very really unique. We have researched AI trust for more than 20 years. So we just have released hallucination detection function on September. And this is the function looks like. When Gen AI gives us an answer, you click the hallucination check button. They give us a percentage in three categories. Higher percentage is most likely hallucination. And the category is check entire answer and check sentence by sentence. And the third one, this is very unique, check key phrase in each sentences. And this is how we detect hallucination I cannot say a detail because it's um, very um, secret technology. <laughs> so, um, but what we do is the, we are keep asking, fill in the blank question where hallucination tends to occur. And this gives us a percentage of hallucination. So I have explained about conversational Gen AI, but we do have another strong Gen AI. This AI creates AI model. AutoML. And one of the biggest manufacturing company in Japan is using Fujitsu AutoML for prediction of parts inventory and demand forecast. And they save money or they earn money, uh, more than $20 million a year per year uh, uh, as a result. And we have done two weeks of POC and get the great performance and accuracy. And after that, we have done two months of enterprise project to get into the real operation. What they are doing is we collect data from the sales, uh, sales data from Salesforce, the collect financial data from ERP, AP, SAP, and also they have a marketing research data and they also have a SGM data that creates own. And we do have a strong solution called UPENS DI Essentials and this has a great data collection and data integration function so integrate data and give it to Fujitsu AutoML and do the prediction. And I know AutoML is everywhere in the world, but Fujitsu AutoML is very good at the speed. This graph shows the time taken to create a suitable AI model. And the Fujitsu AutoML shows as a blue. I think you cannot even see because when other AutoML takes few hours, 
us takes like few minutes or a few seconds. So that much faster. One or two attempts doesn't make that much difference. But think about to the get into the real operation. In this project, we tried 40 times. So 40 times and few hours, it's a really big difference. So this is why we could have done the POC project in two weeks or enterprise project in two months. So I have um, uh, shown the Gen AI, conversational Gen AI and the Fujitsu Auto ML. And these are from Kozuchi. And of course, we do have more strong um, AI engines uh, on the Kozuchi. And if you have interested in, we do have a Fujitsu booth or we have a tomorrow, um, we have a session, Kozuchi session tomorrow. So please join us. Thank you very much, it's all me. Yeah. Back to Andrew. Thank you very much, Yuki. Um, so we're coming to the end. Um, obviously, as, um, as Yuki said, we've got the Kazuchi platform there where we can show, I think, just to emphasize that the Kazuchi platform runs and is hosted on Microsoft Azure. There's references there to um, Microsoft technologies that are included and surfaced and combined with the many decades of AI research that we have done as Fujitsu as well. Um, in terms of sessions, um, just to signpost where you can follow up and find some more information. And um, we're here, obviously, in our breakout session today. Um, we had a demo session um, um, earlier in more detail. Um, but also, you can go to our booth. We're on booth number 302. And people will talk you through the demos um, um, in more detail and give you answers to your questions um, as they come up. Um, we also have an on-demand video um, session um, that's available that's talking about hybrid IT and some of the issues that are related to that um, based around Microsoft technology, especially talking about some of the issues around security, which is kind of related to what we've done today. So in conclusion, um, really would like to thank you all for your time today and um, appreciate your attention. Um, I hope we've given you something useful and something to think about. Um, the team are here after the session if you've got any questions. Or as I say, please find us on any of the days at our booth on number 302. Thank you very much.